welcome to my vlog. This is going to be a little insight into my angling, which I balance with busy work life and family commitments, like many of you, mainly doing the overnight life weekly, not fishing weekends. Roll the tape, let's start the vlog. Just have a little walk around the venue now. Swim to swim, try and work out the plan, but it's very peaceful, it's tranquil, and the wildlife is here in abundance. I've seen lots of kingfishers already, a couple of birds diving, the normal coots, grebes, and the odd cormorant, but just listen to that, it's absolutely paradise. No cars, got a cornfield to my right, got wind turbines over to the left, and it's a really lovely place to be. We've only been here 15, 20 minutes or so, and I cannot wait to get started. Gonna kick back, enjoy the session, and hopefully it unfolds into a start of a really good blog series. Documenting my angling, my family life, my work life, because there's many people out there hustle and bustle, juggling all them three things, family, work, and angling balance, and it is very difficult. So hopefully you enjoy it as we go across. And the main thing is, to try and get some fish on the bank. We've got 24 hours to make it happen, and we're gonna do it. I might get a little bit of wildlife down here on the old new fish mill. Win some, you lose some, and I certainly lost that one. Back in it goes. Back in it goes. It's always nice when you arrive at a new venue, but the first thing you have to do is all about location. We've parked up the gate that you come through, the first gate. We've had a nice walk round. I've seen a couple of areas where I've seen some shows and a little bit of fizzing. So at the moment I'm standing in Peg 10 and a lovely area between multiple islands, lots of features. I'm gonna get a little leading rod out, explore what's out there, and I cannot wait to get started. Well, you'll see that I'm using the transmit spotter marker braid there. All I've got in is a four ounce dumpy pair. I'm getting really nice drops out there, nice and firm, which gives me an array of different presentations for the boom section of the rigs that I'm gonna to choose to use. But the reason why I like using the transmit is super responsive. You can feel every little tap, tap, tap of the gravel through the rod tip, down through the braid, down into your fingertips. It really does help you work out what's under the lake bed, which you can't see with your own eyes, but having a lead and a really good spotter marker braid, like the Transmit, can definitely, definitely put extra fish on the bank for you. You want to be fishing over really nice substrates. I found a really good area there. Now with all the time, get some bait out and get them rods out. Well, we are rocking and rolling. The session is now underway. I've got two rods out there on a baited area, and I've noticed a few fish down this left-hand margin showing in close tight off these reeds. I put a single out there and that one's gone instantly. And I've got a little one down there in the net. Just while the cameraman was getting himself all sorted, the first robber's away. I've got this one back in position in a similar area, just off the reeds. 
and we're now attached to our second wind farm carp. Couldn't be any more pleased at how this session has started. When you go to a new venue, it's always nice to unlock it early, getting the little pieces to the bigger picture with the end result, more carp in the land in there. I didn't think that they'd be coming over single hook baits, but when they're showing like they have been down this margin, you just can't ignore it. And it's absolutely paid off. Two carp in real quick succession. Let's hope we get the second one in. Still pulling hard down this margin. Real simple, medium curved D-rigs, which I've been using over the last few months, both at home and on a filming trip away in France. And they've been working wonders. So we're just hoping now we get this one in, let all the equipment do the hard work, enjoy the fight, and hopefully we'll have a couple of lovely wind farm carp to show you. Well, you now find me just over an hour into my midweek session. I'm working from the bank today. And as you can see, we are away with the first one. Bang on 30 pounds. The first bite from a new venue is always special. And being over the magical 30 pound mark, I'm absolutely made up with this. 30 pound of majestic mirror from the Wind Farm Lake. We're gonna slip this one back because I've got another scaly one to show you. The session has really kicked off and we've only been here a very short while. I can't wait to see how the next 20 or so hours unfolds. I'll be working in between and I'll be giving you a little insight into my angling, my approach and how I approach these venues on real limited time like most of you guys that have a busy family, work commitments and you want to get your all important angling in there as well just like me. Let's slip this one back and have a look at that other one. That is just one of those carp where size really isn't relevant. Absolutely beautiful apple slice scales, pure perfection, heavily plated mirror. Testament to the wind farm. I think there's a few in here that look like this and I wouldn't mind making acquaintances with this one when it's 20 pound bigger and it's into the 40s. What a stunning, stunning creature. Let's slip this one back, have a little insight into my rigs, the hook baits that I'm choosing to use. What a fantastic start. Only just say over an hour in, and we we're two under our belt. There's a few fish still showing out there. Could turn into a great session, but if it doesn't, this one's made my trip already. Let's get this stunning mirror back. We'll get that rod back in position down this left hand margin. Little bit of bait over the top, and hopefully it won't be too long for one of them other rods is away. The other two are out over bait. This is a real opportunist rod and it's paid dividends so far, just keeping my eyes on the water, getting the location right, little traps, little mouthfuls of attraction, and it's working wonders. So the first couple of fish, they've both come on my medium curve D-Rig. Just a 15 mil match to hatch hybrid wafter, which is a mix of the cell and the activate. A blend of the two, 50-50. And I'm just mounting that with some floss on the mini hook ring swivel, down to the medium curve D-Rig. I've opted to use this rig instead of like a slip D-Rotator, just due to the substrate that's out there. It's a nice firm bottom, getting a real nice firm drop. Anti-tangle sleeve on there just to help kick it away from the lead. And that could not be any simpler.
the left hand rod, repositioned down that margin. Just getting the monocast sinking perfectly, just draping off the rod tip. Turn that down. I don't like to attach the bobbins till right at the last minute, just so the line settles lovely on the lake bed. And that one's ready, that's back in position. Little splatter in a bait over the top via the catapult. Probably 30 to 50 hybrid 15 mil boilies. I'm not putting out loads of bait, even though I've had a couple of fish, I just want to build on it a bite at a time. I don't want to put too much in, I'm not going to get a bite and it's going to slow bites down because I'm introducing too much bait. I know here the predominant they've seen a lot of pellet, but I'm going down the boilie option. I have got pellet out across the other two rods, but the single hook baits with a little scattering of bait seems to be working wonders down this left hand margin. So we're going to get that sorted now, they're all done. I'm going to get back on my laptop because I said I'm juggling work and fishing life today. I've got a few spreadsheets to do, I've got a few shops to contact. So I'm going to get back involved in the laptop and hopefully it won't be long before another one of these rods is away. loads of places to hide, they get massive in it. Well that is the work done and dusted for another day and I can't complain about today's work, just look at my office. So peaceful, very tranquil and now I'm going to touch a little bit on the venue. You join me on the Wind Farm Lake right in the Kent countryside and it is absolutely beautiful. This is on the Chilston Fish Farms books, it's their newest syndicate to go alongside the Chilston Stour in Canterbury and what can I say, I've been here fair few hours now and it is absolutely beautiful. And the lake itself is absolutely stunning. It's all reed lined so the carp have got somewhere to hide. It's an abundance of naturals out there. I've seen some shrimp, I've seen a lot of snails. When the cameraman was down in the margin, some snails popped up and they're absolutely huge. The swims, you can see they're lovely wood chip, they're decking so you're out in front of the high reed lines and the wind breaks. You need the wind breaks here on the Romney Marsh and they're absolutely perfect. More than enough for most one and two man sized bivvies. The lake itself, the stock, you know the stock is going to have some heritage and some pedigree because they're coming from the Chilston fish farm, just like the stour fish. They're going to grow on to be absolute monsters. So the ones that we've seen so far, we've had a heavily plated mirror at just over 22 pound, absolute stunner, and a really nice breeze block majestic mirror over 30 pounds. I have heard there's a few upper 30s in here, there's a good head of 30s, and an abundance of lovely high 20s. When you do that first night on a new lake, it's really exciting. It's great to have a couple of fish under your belt already. The sun is setting beyond the wind turbines, and it's just a lovely place to be. George has put a couple of rods out for tonight, just down to my right. I think there's a good chance for him to get a bite. There's a nice head of carp in here. There's a few fish showing. Let's see what the night brings. I'm going to kick back, open a cider, as I always do on my angling adventures, and I'm going to enjoy that sunset over there. I'm away, bye mate. Wow. Well, I was just enjoying a nice dark fruit and that beautiful sunset over there behind the turbines. And the rod is away. I was on the phone just talking about the lake to one of my close friends, one of the bailiffs on my other syndicate. I said, I've got to go, mate, because the take was so aggressive, it pulled all three bloody rods off the pod nearly. And we are attached to another 
stunning wind farm carp. Just enjoying playing this one in that beautiful sunset over there. That old margin rod has bust into life again. They all fight quite hard in here. Couldn't have, couldn't have hoped for a better start to the session. Three takes in a few hours. Great company, great venue, amazing picturesque scenery. And I just can't believe how quiet it is here. It's so peaceful. Away from the hustle and bustle, no cars. Just yourself, nature, and some hard fighting carp. quick and effective, taking the rig off, the quick change swivel. Now all I've got to do is get another lead on there and a new rig, get that down the margin. The fish is safe down in the net. I'll worry about that in a minute. But as I said, on these short sessions, you want to maximize your time. I don't get loads and loads of time and I want to get that rod back in position before the opportunity disappears. There's some fish down there when I was still playing it, another one showed. So I want to be as quick as I can and get that all important rod out. Well, the rod is now back in position. It's super important to get that rod out. You don't know how long the feeding spells are gonna be. So I need to maximize the time and the opportunity. So that one's now back out in position. Well, this is the prize of the last take, 23 pound common. Not gonna to spend too much time with this one. Gonna slip this one back. I don't wanna hold on to it for too long. I'm gonna get some rigs tied up for the night. Gonna get my van and my work stuff ready for tomorrow because from here I'll be going for a few shot visits and it might be a hectic night. So let's slip this one back and get myself prepared. Well, it's been a bit of a frantic night, so I'm sorry if I look a little bit dishevelled. I'm pretty tired and I'm going to be going off to work in a couple of hours. But this was the third one of the morning. I've had this one on first light, just on £21. Lovely little mirror. Also had an upper double common throughout the night and another £21 mirror. And uh, I've got a real gem to show you now. The rods burst into life just as I put this one into the net. I've had a double take and the other one is pretty incredible. I'm going to slip this one back now and go and have a look at it. What 
a carp to follow up the others. 30 pound 10 of stunning near fully scaled mirror. I can't believe how this session's unfolded. To get a few fish, even the first bite on my first vlog I was hoping for, I'm now seven fish in with this being the pick of the bunch at just over 30 pound. Absolutely stunning creature. Look at its huge apple slice scales. All I've got around me is wildlife, peace and quiet, and stunning, stunning carp. There's not many times that I'm speechless, but I am with this one. With a carp as good looking as this, it'd be rude not to show you both sides. Now I'm gonna go and put that kettle on. I've got a couple of shop visits today. I'm gonna work out cool plans for next week and I'm gonna be going home super, super happy. Still got a couple of hours left with the rods out before we head off to work for the first shop visit of the day. But what a start to the blog. She was a compact. Pivy? Yeah. Standard. It's standard. Oh, comp compact. It is. I was going to say it looks smaller than mine. You don't do them anymore, do you? Ah, well, it looks like we've got one last bit of action sitting there having a cup of tea, just getting ready to pack everything away, get on the travels, and the rod's away. Hopefully we get this one in. Be a lovely way to end. A fantastic short spell down on the marsh. They all fight so hard in here. You don't know if it's enough a double or 30, they really scrap. Considering, mate, you've had, what's this, fish number seven, eight? Considering this is fish number eight, you don't look too happy about it. Eight's my lucky number, fish number eight, that's a wrap. Now we're going to get packed up and get to work. Can we get some breakfast first? We can have breakfast at the cafe, George. <laughs> <laughs> lovely way to end just short of 24 hours on the Chilston wind farm down in the Kent countryside fish number eight a lovely little mirror we're gonna get this one back now gonna slip off to the calf get some breakfast and get into them all important shop visits for the day I hope you've enjoyed the fishing side of the program now we're gonna go off to the day-to-day -day life and I might even show you a little bit of football training tonight on the raw vlog just showing that you can have a really good work and family life balance and get your all important fishing in.
Okay, all right, lovely. Thanks very much. Bye, mate. Well, that's work sorted. Just been sorting out an order for one of the stores in Norfolk. And now the all important thing, breakfast. Let's get going. Oh, no mushrooms, that's it. I was just going to say, you're missing mushrooms. Well, even with breakfast arriving, I'm still doing work, the emails. But, uh, yeah, we've got three shop visits after this. I usually do a monthly call plan, so I work out my day-to-day -day life. Know exactly where I'm going in advance, try and get a group of shops together. And we've got three today, quite close to the lake where we've been, which has been a bit of a bonus. We're going to get this eaten and get off to the first one shortly. <laughs> Finished and four pieces of toast. Let's go to work. Thank you very much. Thanks. Have a nice day. Thank you. Come on, let's go. Well, that's the favourite part of the day done breakfast. Well, not just the favourite because I do like lunch and I do like dinner as well. But that's me on a full stomach now. Had a little freshen up in there, toilets. So I can get on my way now to work go and visit the shops. We're gonna to go to one of the angling direct stores first, and then we're gonna to go to two independents, see how they're getting on, see what's selling well, see if they've got any returns, any issues, any problems, which they usually don't. And then uh, we'll get down to tidying up their racking, sorting out orders, and then I'll be working out my call plan for the following month. Let's get going. So we've popped into the first store, one of the local angling directs. Just topping up the racking, seeing where the gaps are, working out what will be on the next order system, showing them new products. And yeah, just, uh, so just about to put the kettle on, have a cup of tea, it's what you do in these shop visits. You drink lots of tea, eat loads of biscuits, and fill up racking. So yeah, get that drink sorted, little journey to the next shop, and a uh, little insight into shop visits. Just having a little look over the connections, TT range, and you'll see there's lots of empty pegs, which is a great sign. It means lots of people are buying it. Just going through, working out what numbers are on there, what's required, get it all topped back up, ready for the next weekend, for the all important customers to come in, so it's there when they want to go fishing. So obviously we do this big tackle box now. Yeah. This is the new small one. Mm -hmm. The armory light, after size. Anyone who does short sessions, 48 hours, even a week in France, we use more than ample this. Yeah, so I think you probably sell more of these ones because of the size of it. Well, that's the first one done. Nice and easy, just showing them the new products. Topping up the racking, seeing what gaps they're missing, replenishing it ready for the weekend for the anglers. But now we're going to head a short while down to another store, an independent retailer. Join me down there, let's see what they're doing. Join me at my second shop visit. This one is in Victor Anglin in Ashford. As you can see, the TT, the connection range has gone well again. There's two shops in a row where it seems to be selling well. And yeah, they look like they've just had a delivery, to be honest. I know Sean's on it in here, keeping it all up to date all the time. But I'm gonna have a cup of tea of him now, show him a few new items, and then uh, get across to the next shop. Because over the course of a day, you can see between three to five shops, depending on time span, how far the journeys are between shop to shop, and uh, just waiting for him to put the kettle on, have a brew, show him some new products, and then we'll be on our way. Nice one. That's number two done and dusted. One more, let's get over there now, and we'll have another cup of tea, because you'll see we have loads of tea and biscuits, as I touched on before. Let's get over there now. About a 25 minute drive to the next door, we're gonna get across there now. Well, you now join me at Outlaw Pro Kent and similar to the previous two shops, I'm gonna go over to their areas where the Ridge Monkey's situated, top up all the items that are missing, let them know their back order reports, let them know arrivals and show them many new products. Got a couple of customers in at the minute, so I'll let them deal with those because they always come first and I'll show the area in here. So what 
I do in most stores, I come over to Racking, I know where everything is, any new products that are coming out, I arrange a space to try and get them in so it's nice and tight, nice and compact, and looks really neat. Just going along working out the connections range, filling in the gaps, I'm gonna to top up the order on one of the order forms. It's usually a 24 to 48 hour turnaround, so the products will be here hopefully for the weekend. And uh, yeah, most of them I just put the orders in, go and show it past the manager or one of the shop staff, get the okay, and then the goods will leave. Yeah, I'll just pull that in last time. Put it on while you're holding it. Hey, it's the size of the But medium answer. That is a wrap. Thank you for following me for the last 24 hours on my day to day journey, shop visits, fishing, some lovely carp. Little bit of takeaway food, which is me, all over. Love my fishing, love my food, love my job. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again next month with another instalment. I might be out with George again. I might be doing it raw. I'm gonna do a little bit of footage while I'm out filming with Total Carp next week. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if I see you in your local tackle shop, come and say hello. And if I see you on the bank, I wish you the very best of luck. See you next month. Let's do this.